Okay, so that was a couple of the ones that we've done. They both share the similar effect as far as the bullet time type movement, which I will cover in a separate video because that's a bit longer. In this one, I'm going to show just how I did the blood trail effect. Basically, I, as you can see here, I had to track in Mocha two different elements. I had to track uh, Ohm as she's lying there, Anna. I initially tried to uh, track the wall and then uh, track her as a separate object. I layered her on top of um, the wall object in the panel up to the left there. And when you do that, the top item uh, is cut out from the uh, action of the separate, uh, the bottom layers. However, um, there was a little bit of problem because that wall is just a beast to track. It's really, really difficult. Also, just a little point of note, as you see her rising up like that, if you forget to track the shadows, the shadows are included in any other type of track, like the top wall track that I am had to adjust so that I didn't come into these uh, problems. So I switched it out. I trapped tracked her separately because I needed to have the blood trail uh, emerge uh, as the um, as a separate item and thus I had to track where her head was. It didn't matter that I was over the head. That's something I can adjust in Mocha uh, on the fly as needed. Now here you can see the top track didn't track exceptionally well. Extreme motion blur which I put in on the film itself uh, for to keep the stylized effect. And, uh, but that's unimportant because that was um, at a particular point where the blood won't be showing up anyway. So my main thing was trying to find an accurate track where the blood would be showing up. And so now that the tracked information is in there, I can extend the boundaries and then start putting in um, exactly where the blood um, insert is going to be. And this is in Mocha Pro, so you can do inserts like that. So I wanted it tracked accurately enough for whatever I place in that blue bounding box to appear. And that's why her head coming down starts making that. You can see how that would be where the reveal of the blood comes through. Okay, admittedly, this is a hurried track. This is a hurried process. Normally, I do things a little bit more refined. Um, a lot of things on my plate, just trying to get this done quickly. So. What I did was I went to the remove module and I created a clean plate off of that and just saved it to the hard drive. That's going to be where I open it up in Photoshop and start the work. This process here was simply creating a new layer, selecting uh, the right type of blood. Because I had everything stylized to be a bit darker, uh, I knew I would be taking whatever I couldn't put bright blood in there. I wanted to make something uh, darker blood, and you'll see how I layer this in a second. Again, this is quick and dirty. This is something that I didn't go and uh, review studies on um, blood trails and things like that. I have a pretty good history of <laughs> what occurs in blood because of my training uh, as it dries and different types of surfaces and, of course, the lighting here. So, as you can see, the process is basically taking different brushes, getting an effect that I want, including taking the eraser brush and erasing uh, with a particular type of uh, brush that has a more splattered type uh, bristle pattern. And then I go through and smear it and blur it, and then I take it into liquify where I start to give it even a more controlled smearing effect. 
Then once that's done, I go back and I test out the blending modes. I see which one is favorable. And what I like to do is I like to multiply my layers, uh, just make copies of them. And uh, so I always have the original. I, I'm, I know there's probably other ways of doing it. I just do it this way because it's familiar, it's easy for me. And I always have my originals underneath the modified ones. And from here, it's just basically a uh, working blurs, working um, a little bit more of the distortion and so forth on one of the other layers. Then I merge them and then bring export it as a PNG and bring it into the insert module. And from there, I start adjusting its size according to how I want it to look on the wall itself. That's just a little finessing of where I need to place it. And then from that point, uh, it's working on uh, essentially what kind of opacity and do I need to have it bleed through, that sort of thing. Uh, and so those are just fine adjustments that uh, occur. The other thing about that is uh, there are, because of the fade out, I'm using this not on the original project, but because of the fade out to black, uh, there is a uh, basically overall change to the lighting and so forth. So that's adjusted as well. Uh, Mocha uh, allows you to keyframe basically anything that you start modifying here as uh, you work through because the keyframing is on uh, will be able to be adjusted over time. And that's actually pretty cool. So what I do here is uh, I tighten up the mat to her head here. And I start to give it a little bit of a feather too. Now for the cutout, you have to click use all foreground layers. That allows it to, whatever you have as a foreground layer, will be uh, able to be used to do the reveal, as in this. Basically, it, it's a tracked mat that you can adjust uh, keyframing over time. So, which is again, what I do here is just more refinement of the uh, reveal uh, through just keyframing it uh, tight to her head through the movement, as well as adjusting the edge width a little bit so that it can have that uh, feathering in the mask, basically, that allows the hair uh, to, because it's kind of a, it's, you, <laughs> you've got two things going on here. One is the the extreme amount of motion blur, but also the um, hair itself isn't known for being very clear cut and refined for the most part, especially through movement. So uh, this is where you adjust the feathering and uh, allow that reveal to come through um, in a more uh, realistic way uh, for, for what you've got. And uh, I think it turned out really well. I think it was a uh, something that was you know done in a couple hours, and again, it's if it's it's something that if you don't do it all the time, you got to go back and say, oh, okay, wait a minute, uh, oh yeah, I forgot to put on <laughs> use all foreground layers, uh, that sort of thing. So uh, it's just a matter of the more you do it, the uh, more frequently you do it, surely the faster uh, the work is. Uh, so I could probably have done this in an hour, but um, uh, <laughs> the only thing that took me more time was, again, just uh, having to refresh my memory where I was and getting back into it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I do have another one on the bullet time type effect, uh, shot with an iPhone, so I will have that in a separate video. And uh, that'll show you how I actually did the bullet time effects uh, that you'll be able to do. If you like it, uh, please subscribe and share. Uh, let's make this channel grow, and that'll just keep me busy working and making more stuff for you. Thank you.